Abbas ji, my first question to you is that in your Twitter bio, you have mentioned that you are an ex-Marxist. And uh, it is widely known that Marxism and communism is that destructive. They manipulate the mind and divide people. Uh, so my question to you is, what is it that made you leave it? What was your wake up call moment? Uh, again, uh, wake up call came from my own civilization itself. And um, while I was uh, uh, surrounded with the dust and whatever you I call them absolute dust, nothing else, because they are something which can be removed easily, but they are there with you. It's your will which can remove it. So I was surrounded with all these. In the meantime, uh, uh, my journey to Ajanta and Elora Caves turned the things upside down for me. Uh, Which was because, how, if you could tell us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, I, by then, uh, I was completely drenching into the idea of communism. Perhaps I would have gone more deeper and maybe that, uh, I don't know, whether the violent phase were also up for me. I'm not very sure about it. Mm -hmm. But yes, something was there in the packet. And then when we, uh, for the, uh, I was uh, uh, teaching the students of uh, a college in Nagpur. And mm -hmm. while I was there, I went there with them as a faculty in charge for a study tour. Mm -hmm. And that study tour was in Aurangabad, uh, where we have got Ajanta and the great Eloras. So the moment I entered the vicinity of uh, Elora Caves, mm -hmm. I was startled, like, uh, you know, because I am an architect student uh, and I had drew, I had drawn them, all of them in examination, the sketches and whatnot. You get 10 odd marks for drawing it out. But Somehow we were never taught at what exactly they are. Mm -hmm. But when I was in the courtyard of the Elora, I was like, oh my God, what it is. Mm -hmm. It is so gigantic, so enormous. And apart from being gigantic, then what I clearly look at the kind of art piece it was. Mm -hmm. But these are something which even perhaps Marxist or communist may also appreciate, but there was nothing. Someone may say that how can really it bring the change? But uh, further walking through the grandeur of Kailasha temple, when I further went on to the Ajanta caves, that is when the most of things happened. So uh, when you enter the Ajanta caves, unlike the other caves of India or any cave architecture per se, you step down instead of climbing up. So the section, or uh, if you cut the cave uh, into a slice, then you will see that uh, there is a, you will step, you enter, then you step down and you keep going. Unlike the other caves where you step in and you climb, keep on climbing upside. So it was unusual. So the thing got stuck in my mind that why there was a depression when it is, it's so unlikely of a cave architecture. Then I did ask the thing to a local architect uh, when the guides were unable to really give me a satisfactory answer. So uh, the, the person's name was Professor Bishpande. He's an academic and also a uh, well-known architect of the, vicinity, the, the region. He explained that these ditches or the depression, what you see, were there to facilitate the paintings to be done. So I was like, how, what the ditches have got to do with the paintings inside the cave? Then he explained that, uh, rather he asked me two questions, that uh, what was the source of color? Then I said the source of color was the organic, uh, organic um, or, or like trees and uh, they used to extract colors from those sources. Mm -hmm. Then uh, what is the source of light? You require light within the dark caves, right? So that time the source of light was nothing, but uh, uh, the, either you have to use a fire or the sun rays. There was no other source. So if you use fire with the organic paint inside the dark cave, then the organic paint will just go off because of the carbon. Carbon will just take it off. So what these guys or whom I used to think to be the foolish ones, the monks or the saints, whatever we may like to call them, they used to fill those dishes with water. So those depressions, what you see inside the cave, were there to contain the water. So, and the caves face south. And from the south side in India, you uh, receive a very harsh sunlight. And they used to get those rays incident onto the water and the rays used to reflect back. And that is how they used to generate the light. And the slow called snail's law of reflection was being used 
to do the painting inside the cave. And I was like, wow, if a uh, home I used to think as a foolish ones were using the something called a sales law, mm -hmm. long back, 2000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So that was the point where I started turning away from the thing. And I, there's a basic ASI store uh, in front of the, uh, the moment you enter to the complex, you have got two ASI stores. So I just put my, uh, whatever books I could from the, in the backpack, whatever I could load. Uh, they always, they used to carry the footnotes uh, as in the references that where the references will take you to the Buddhist literature. Mm -hmm. The Buddhist literature will take you back to the Dharmic or Indian literature. Uh, when I say Indian literature, I was thrown to Upanishads, mm -hmm. then the Purana. And so the whole cycle was completely ulta. Mm -hmm. And then it started happening. I took quite a bit of time, three, four years to realize that I'm still discovering myself. I don't know who I am and there's a long way to go. Uh, this is what I think. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.